Concentration. Concentration. Concentrate. Concentrate is basically how much stuff do you have in a certain amount of space. So you have to define the amount of space you have. We call that volume. You also have to distinguish how much stuff you have in that volume. The more stuff you have, the higher the concentration is. Or, if you have less volume in which to fit it, your concentration will be higher as well. You need to have those two things to know concentration. How much stuff do you have? And how much volume does it have to move around in? The most common form of concentration that we use in chemistry is called molarity. You can find this on reference table T. Molarity is moles of solute divided by liters of solution. Moles gives us the amount of stuff we have. Liters gives us how much space it has to move around in. The two requirements we need to do concentration. Moles per liter. Now, of course, very rarely do we actually measure anything in moles. More often we measure things in grams. So to find moles, you take the grams and divide by the formula mass of the substance, and that will give you how many moles you have. Also, because molarity is moles per liter, if you're given milliliters, take those and divide by a thousand, and that'll give you how many liters of solution you have. What is the molarity of a solution if it contains 2.0 moles of KNO3 and 4.0 liters of solution? Well, molarity is equal to moles divided by liters, and they give us both pieces of information. There's our moles divided by, there's our liters. Now, the unit can be one of two things. You could call it moles per liter, which is perfectly acceptable. Or you could use capital M, which stands for molar. You know, like on a big teeth you have in the back of your mouth? Molar! Molar. Why did I put this zero out here? Well, it's interesting you should ask. You did ask, didn't you? Two sig figs, two sig figs. We need two sig figs in our answer. What is the molarity of a solution if it contains 2.0 moles of NaCl and 250 milliliters of solution? Molarity equals moles, which you cannot abbreviate, by the way. Well, that's not entirely true. Moles can be abbreviated M-O-L. But in which case, why even bother? Moles per liter. Now we have moles, 2.0, divided by liters. <gasps> ah! We don't have liters. We have milliliters. We have to divide this by a thousand milliliters per liter to get liters. That's 0 0.250 liters. Hey, what you put that zero in there for? Well, because there was a decimal point here, so there's three sig figs there, so three sig figs there. Two divided by 0.25 is 8.0 moles per liter, right? Two sig figs, three sig figs, the fewer amount. Or you could call it 8.0 molar, capital M. Either one of those will be great. So what is the molarity of a solution if it contains 20 grams of NaOH in 2.0 liters of solution? Molarity equals moles divided by liters. We have grams. We need to get moles. Na weighs 23.0. O weighs 16.0. H weighs 1.0. Don't believe me? Look it up. That's 40.0 grams per mole. 20 divided by 40, half a mole, 0 0.50, two sig figs, three sig figs, two sig figs, 0 0.50 moles, divided by, oh, wasn't that convenient, they gave us liters, 2.0 liters, 0.5 divided by 2, 0.25 moles per liter, or you could say 0.25 molar. Again, two sig figs, two sig figs, two sig figs is the answer. What is the molarity of a solution if it contains 60 grams of NaOH and 400 milliliters of solution? <sighs> they had to make our lives difficult. Unbelievable. Molarity equals moles divided by liters. We're given 60 grams of NaOH. Well, we just figured out that NaOH is 40.0 grams per mole. 60 divided by 40, 1.5. Two sig figs, two sig figs, moles. 
right? If one mole is 40, 60 is one and a half times as much, so it's one and a half moles. We're given milliliters, divide by a thousand milliliters per liter. 1.5 divided by 0 0.400. Two sig figs, three sig figs, two sig figs, or, and that is how you calculate molarity. See, in this case, what you would do is you'd take 400 milliliters of your solution and you'd evaporate it. And once all the water was completely gone, you would weigh how many grams of NaOH was left behind. Because when the water goes away, the NaOH stays behind. So if 60 grams stays behind, out of the original 400 milliliters, the molarity is 3.8 molar. That's pretty strong stuff. You don't want to, you don't want to mess with that. An even more practical application of this is calculating how much solute you need to measure out to make the solution that you want. Now this is something that anybody who gets in any science related field is going to have to be able to do on their own. Because you're going to use solutions and you have to know how much stuff to use in what volume to make the concentration of solution you want. Molarity equals moles divided by liters. This says how many grams of NaOH are needed. Well, which of these things can you convert to grams? Well, moles of solute can be converted into grams of solute. So let's rearrange this equation. Multiply both sides by liters. Moles equals molarity times liters. That's going to come in handy later when we do something called titration in acids and bases. So the molarity is 0.50 molar times the liters is 4.0 molar. 0.5 times 4 is 2.0 moles. But wait, we're not done, because this says how many grams of NaOH. How do you convert moles to grams? Multiply by formula mass. Times 40.0 grams for each mole means we need to weigh out 80 decimal point grams. Why not 80.0? Two sig figs, three sig figs, two sig figs in the answer. What this means is we have to find a four liter container four liter container and in that four liter container we need to put 80 grams of sodium hydroxide and then we fill it up with water and we shake it until it's completely dissolved then we'll have our four liters of our 0.5 molar solution how many grams of KCl are needed to make 500 milliliters of a 0 0.100 molar solution of KCl again we want grams so we have to find moles first moles equals molarity times liters this equals 0 0.100. If you want, instead of capital M, I'll write it out. Moles per liter, molarity. And then I'm going to multiply that by, oh dear, they give us milliliters. All right, easy fix. 1,000 milliliters per liter. That would come out to be uh, 0 0.500. Three sig figs, three sig figs, liters. Look what happens. Liters go bye-bye. Leaves us with moles, which is what we're trying to find out. 0 0.0500 moles. Three sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs. To find grams, we need to multiply it by the formula mass of KCl. According to the periodic table, K is 39.1. Cl is 35.5, which adds up to 74.6 grams per mole. When you multiply that out, 3.73 grams of KCl are needed. Okay, so again, we're going to take a 500 milliliter container. This is a 500 milliliter volumetric flask. It only measures one thing. There's a line here. When you fill up the liquid to that line, you have exactly 500 milliliters. So what do we do? We weigh out 3.73 grams of potassium chloride and put it in this container. Then we fill it with some water and swirl it and keep filling and swirling until it's dissolved and your volume is up to that line. You've just made 500 milliliters of a 0 0.100 molar solution. This is the most practical application of concentration that you will learn in here.